The Silk Road begins in Chang'an. To the west lie Persia and Rome, and to the south, India. If you continue eastwards, you eventually come to Korea and Japan. The Silk Road ends in Chang'an as well, the place people came to for silk and for Eastern culture. Already more than 2,000 years ago, Chang'an was a center of exchange between East and West. Our Silk Road expedition was a joint effort made up of people from NHK, the Japan Broadcasting Corporation, and from CCTV, China Central Television. The expedition started from Chang'an, the city which is today called Xi'an. It was the beginning of a journey that would take us across the Yellow River, through the Taklamakan Desert, and towards Pamir. It's the world's last unexplored region, the Silk Road. The bell tower near the center of Xi'an is a sort of symbol of the entire city. This was the center of Chang'an, which was the capital of China during the Han and Tang dynasties, and which flourished as the terminus of the Silk Road. During the Tang dynasty, Chang'an was a splendid city, about nine kilometers or five miles square. It was about twice the size of the present city of Xi'an. The Tang Imperial Palace stood where the bell tower now stands, a very impressive building centered on the Imperial Council Hall. Directly in front of the Council Hall lay a great avenue, 150 meters wide or 500 feet, called Tu Chua Avenue. This was the city's main thoroughfare, and other streets branched at right angles from it, forming square city blocks, like a chessboard. In the eastern part of the city, were marvelous buildings, such as the Xing Qin Palace of the Emperor Xuan Jiang. And merchants came to Chang'an from all over the world. Merchants from the east congregated in what was called the Eastern Market, and those from the west in the Western Market. Here, foreign traders could find lodging houses and take part in the city's thriving business. And leading westwards from Chang'an was the Great Silk Road. Whenever we think of China, we think of the Great Wall. And whenever we think of the Great Wall, our thoughts turn to the Emperor Qi Huang Di, who started to build it. He quelled the tribal strife that divided China, united it for the first time into a single empire, and with a Great Wall, protected it from its nomadic enemies in the north. He was a notorious despot, but he achieved many great things. A marvelous relic that demonstrates the enormous power of the Emperor Qi Huang Di was recently discovered quite near Xi'an. A huge group of clay models of warriors and their horses has been excavated. It's become known as the Emperor Qi Huang Di's sculptured army. いや、すいませんな。ああ。ヤンさんというのはどの人ですか。長崎市の姓ヤンだ。あ、
あの糸を掘るとき糸,糸,糸を糸を掘るとき地下4メートルの深さのところですねあの新の兵馬陽子を発見しましたそれだけ立派なものを発見されたから、ええ、今英雄ですね、ええ、<笑>ああ今日もいろんな人が見たら、私は英雄The clay arby was discovered after it had been in the ground for 2,200 years. Since it was first unearthed in 1974, no foreigners have been allowed to film it or take any pictures. The joint Chinese-Japanese expedition was the first television team allowed to cover the sculptured army. The greatest archaeological discovery of the 20th century. During the years since the discovery was first made, more than 600 life sized figures of soldiers and horses have been found. But they have only excavated about a tenth of the whole area. When they've all been uncovered, it's expected there'll be more than 6,000 figures. The Emperor Qi Huan Di was indeed a very powerful man. He once said, I am the Emperor Qin, and my name will be passed down to the second, the third, and even to the ten thousandth generation. He even wanted to conquer the world which comes after death. He built a sort of tomb palace underground where he'd live after his death. And place soldiers in its four corners like an imperial guard. Today, this is all being carefully excavated by the archaeologists. The clay statues which are now appearing are the men of that imperial guard. In the famous Chinese history book called The Chronicles, The underground palace is described like this. When the Emperor Qi Huan Di took power, he had a tomb constructed using 700,000 convicts as labor. In it, he placed a golden throne and an observation tower with a hundred officials and military officers. He had a special system invented that would shoot arrows to kill anyone that might try to dig up the palace. The reign of this great tyrant, who boasted that his name would be passed down for centuries, only lasted for a brief 15 years. Yet today, after more than 2,000 years, his underground palace is being seen again. So, in a way, his boast is coming true. The archaeologist in charge told us that to complete the excavation will take about another 20 years of work. He invited us to come back in the year 2000 and told us we'd be welcome. <laughs>